how goes it, hobbyists? Hey, you know, I've uh, I've never done this, but I I guess I just have to say something about all the shootings and uh, the uh, let's call it civil unrest that we're we're dealing with in this country. And uh, you know, I have to say. Um, It's a lot of factors, and, and everyone's perspective is a little different. And then you factor in the way it's, it's done with the media. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of leading the horses in a certain direction. This is what I mean. We're a divided people. We're you know we're almost programmed to be divided. You know, uh, if you're you, if you're rich. Then you, you, you know, you have a problem with the poor. I guess the laws don't, you know, they don't pose a threat to you. If you're poor, or uh, or even not poor, you're just not rich. Then you're supposed to hate the rich and and, and covet everything they have. You know, if you're if you're from uh, 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 a trailer town, then you, then you don't like people from the city. And if you're from the city, then you don't like people. From the suburbs, and if you're black, you're supposed to not like people who are white. And if you're white, you have a problem with black people. If you have a, if you don't totally agree with, say, gay marriage, then you then you're supposed to have a problem with gay people. Like you know, like you can't possibly show love to everybody, but disagree on the subject of gay marriage. Then you're supposed to absolutely hate gay wanna beat them up or something like that. You know, if you have a problem with a person working at a counter because they have no concept of the English language, then you're racist because you don't like people from overseas or you have a problem with immigration that means you hate all people who aren't born here. And that's not true. You know the dude from uh, Chick Fil A. You know they never would tell you this because it's not the narrative. But the guy from Chick Fil A, you remember they wanted to run him out of business, talking about he's a racist and all to be because he simply says what he believes or what he thinks. And right now, at least, he has a constitutional right to do so. He said marriage ought to be between a man and a woman. That's it. That don't mean he hates gays. That don't mean he uh, refused. To, he's got them working for him. He's got them. He's friends with him. And you know, you, they, they didn't tell you this, but when that when that fool opened fire at the Pulse Club, um, you know, guess guess who's never open on Sundays? Chick Fil A. Guess who's do- who's who? You know, you go there to get a little sandwich, and it's constantly cars wrapped around it. They're never open on Sunday. Well, guess who was open on that Sunday, giving away food? Chick Fil A. But the media won't. They won't tell you that because that's not the narrative. It's it's crazy. We are Americans. We don't all see everything the same way. Not everybody black thinks. Black Lives Matter is accurate. You know, and it's like if you, uh, not everybody who believes in having guns goes to church. Not everybody who is, uh, they're uh, blacks, black soldiers fought on both sides of the Civil War. And it wasn't just because the guys for the South were just a bunch of Toms negative and not just not everybody black should have this duty to act like they're from the south side of Detroit if you've never been what if you not what if you work real hard to teach your kids something else and you bring them up the way of a lawyer they're not from the hood they don't know what it's like to be chased by a bunch of guys who's gonna uh they gotta join a gang or die they may not know that but so they're not black anymore that's what we that's where we at and, uh, you know, not, and you, you heard that chief from Dallas 
talking about if you got if you want to fix things, become a police officer. Well, that that invitation's been open all along, and we want to think, well, no, it's institutional racism. They won't let nobody stop me from joining the Navy. Did 20 years. You pass a test. If you could remember your social security number on certain jobs, you got promoted. Nobody cared what color you were. Now they did back in the day. But now it's almost the other way that if you if you're trying to become a an officer and you're not quote unquote a minority, and that's another issue, then you have a harder road. But we don't want to hear that. We don't want to talk about that. You think the system's jacked up? Become a lawyer. Become a police officer. And, you know, you're going to tell me that all those black police officers over the years that have fought and died for people's safety, all of them are Uncle Tom's, because it fits your way of life? You're wrong. It's racist, and you're wrong. And you know it. There are racial tensions that have always been. There are stereotypes. That's the more correct term. That is, you know, there's a prejudice. And, and that just simply means that you prejudge people based on your personal life experience. So if your personal life experience teaches you that every black man with dreads and saggy pants is a thug, that's what you're going to think until he shows you otherwise. And sometimes he may be showing you otherwise and you still refuse to see. That's prejudice. Prejudice is when I walk down the road, I'm black, by the way. I just have to keep emphasizing that. So, so if I'm walking down the road and I see a white man with a baseball cap with a Dixie flag, rebel flag, then I have automatic certain thoughts about him that may or may not be true. That's prejudice. We all have it. And we're self-righteous if we try to say we don't. Served in the Middle East. And as soon as I enter that part of the world, when I smell the water, and it just everything is, smells different, I used to get upset. Because I, like, I didn't like them. That's prejudice. I got to know a lot of Arabs, and that that ended. I let them. I let the. I let a change in my heart come because I opened my mind. One time, so not all white people who think they can sport the uh, what is that the, the the rebel flag hate black people any more than. If I, if I wore some black power t-shirt, that doesn't mean I hate white people. It, and they say that the flag is like a, a heritage, southern heritage. A lot of ways it is. It, ha, it has come to mean to people of color. It's like a stab in the back just looking at it. But again, that's not necessarily always true that when you see somebody with that flag they hate black people so what do you do when you see an interracial couple coming out of a house and one's black and one's white and they got a big rebel flag sitting in the yard now what are you supposed to think which of these things happen oh so i just had to put that out you're wrong if you want to come up and say all police officers who are white need to die. You're wrong. And it's racism. We don't see the racism in that. Because we have been, we have programmed ourselves. And I've often said, you know, it's, that's not going to be good enough. Killing white police officers won't be good enough. And, we, and because the mind doesn't like to think People don't like to think, they don't like to break things down in little individual categories. There's too much work, especially when you're emotionally charged. So 
killing white officers won't be enough and it's gonna it's gonna have to be all officers because you, what are you gonna say to us? What are you gonna say to a black officer or a Hispanic officer? Do you have to eventually say, well, they're a Tom because if they were really black, they'd get up and quit, you know? So it's gonna be all officers. What's the rationale in that? So what we wanna do, like live through the purge? Uh, you know, you we castrate the police and then we turn around, want to disarm the people. So what's next? You're going to have what you want, UN trucks roaming the streets and you want a curfew and the government telling you what time to go to bed because that's what's coming. If you don't, if we don't change, we don't just stop and think for ourselves. Europeans, 10 years ago, you know, if you listen to their podcasts and their political rhetoric, they laugh at us because Americans believe everything we see on TV. We don't want to read, research, nothing. There's a term, it's called all literate. Illiterate, illiterate, sorry, I haven't had my coffee yet. Illiterate means you can't read. All literate means you can read, but you choose not to because it's too much bother. So you're not going to see on TV. Maybe 10 years ago, this off this, off, this kid, black brother, young man, black man, I call them brothers from St. Louis. Some of us call them black men. Some of us call us African-American, I, whatever. This young brother was was uh, running on foot from the cops. They caught him. It was six of them. One was black, very important. And they had him. And they had him in cuffs. And they were. It, we, you saw it from a helicopter. And it was just like, oh, man. And then all of a sudden, they just started beating the living hell out of this kid. And I'm like everybody else. Oh, my gosh. That's... that's Racism, that's racism, it exists, it exists, and look at that, and look at, and I was, and anybody in their right mind would say, why did y'all do that? Why did y'all open up on the kid? You had him because, why that? And so that lasted, like everything else. But then you read something people don't want to do, because it's not going to be on front page, because their narratives, their narrative went a certain way, so they're not going to change it. But then you find out later, oh, snap. This kid broke into somebody's house, stole somebody's car, led them on a high-speed chase, then got out on foot, then ran. They caught him. They had him in cuffs. And they took one officer by the balls and squeezed him like there was no tomorrow and refused to let go. That's why they were wailing on him. And, of course, we didn't get to know that. And I didn't find that out until, like, a year later because I was looking. But you tell me. And the officer, then you look at the you look back at the footage, then the guy, you see this one white man doubled over like he's never gonna walk the same again. Not because he hated black people, because he he had a job to stop people from vandalizing, breaking in somebody's house and stealing their car. So if that was your car. What would you say? Ah, just let him go. Ah, you know, he don't, he don't, he didn't deserve to be a, have a beating because he was black. But I tell you what, if you had my balls and the rights and you were about to rip them off, lucky he didn't, they didn't, they didn't shoot him because of the, the, the outrage that would have come. But think of that was you. You're, you just doing it, you trying to go home and barbecue and watch Law and Order like the rest of us. And now you're going to be in the hospital. Now you'll never walk right, or, or walk right again. Because this fool had a record and wasn't going back to prison. But we don't get to know that. So it's just wrong. It's just all wrong. It's not like 